And welcome back to Open Your Eyes. It is a lovely but hot Thursday morning. Nonetheless, we've got a packed show for you. We're about to venture off into our first segment for the morning. Uh, UWC Belize and scholarship recipients, uh, they're in with us. We've got all four of them. And we're looking forward to that conversation. I hear <laughs> Wales, I hear Canada, I hear Norway, and I hear Costa Rica. My goodness. But uh, let's introduce these ladies to you. We've got Ella Smith. Uh, okay. It says here w UWC Wales, and that's Ella. Although, Ella, you could wave. You could wave. <laughs> yes, and that's the Wales wave. She's completed her program. <laughs> yes, yeah. she has. We and have Havisa yeah, Molina. Yeah, Havisa Molina. Here. And she will be going to Norway. Yeah. We've got Irene Hong. And Irene will be going to Costa Rica. And Madison uh, Burroughs. Yes, and she uh, goes to Canada. And welcome back. And welcome to the show, ladies. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to have you uh, have you guys in. I really want to hear about it, experience. We're excited about it. We so, are too, we? Uh, Firstly, for me, uh, UWC University, or that's United, United, World United World Colleges, Colleges Belize, and there are a few of them across the world, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So let's tell us about uh, how you feel about it, the application process, anybody. Jump on in. We, should we go with the girls who went already? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Here we go. Yeah. Well, UWC is essentially a board of different schools that are located internationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their mission is to make education a force to unite people, nations, and cultures for a peace and a sustainable future. Oh. So just that mission alone made me really interested in the school when applying. And I think that's like the main driving force that leads like a lot of young people to really want to apply to a school like that. Yeah. So that was like the main reason for me to like want to be interested in UWC. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. And? So basically there's 17 schools around the world um, in 17 different countries. And the idea is that not only are there, it's all around the world, but also the students that go in there are all around the world. And they're international. And so in each school about 70% are international mm -hmm. and the remainder is from the country they're in. Okay. So you really get your global perspective of mm -hmm. all the students that go there. And, um, and the application process, obviously it's a, it's a, I wouldn't say exclusive, mm -hmm. but it's very rigorous and it's a very, very challenging course. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so people that get in are not only, they're not just the smarts of the, the smartest of the smart, but they're also the, the most cultured and the most um, well-rounded well -rounded yeah. students that they pick and choose from the countries. They send their best when mm -hmm. they're sending them to these schools. And, and when you see these people, you're getting really like the best of the people. And it's just an all-round amazing experience. Mm. Now, here's the interesting thing. This scholarship is pitched to you uh, in high school, and in fact, uh, it means that most of you are under 18 when you leave. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to hear, so they come to your school, they make this presentation, you go home to mom and dad, and you say, you know, I want to apply to leave next year <laughs> <laughs> um, to another part of the world. And what is their reaction? Well, for me, I applied a bit later than the rest. Okay. There was a college expo at Civic Center. The Quebec Fair, yeah. Yeah, they had a booth oh. set up and they were accepting applications only that day. So I met up with my academic counselor and I'm like, I want to sign up, I want to apply. So luckily <laughs> I had my passport on me for some reason. <laughs> so I applied that same day. And I went home, I told my parents, I was like, uh, I applied for UWC. Um, I hope we're not mad. And they're like, what? <laughs> But then later on, when I explained to them what it was, they understood why yeah. I applied. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think especially the surprising thing for Irene's parents is she's still in third form. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So she's leaving a bit earlier than the rest mm. of us <laughs> would. Yeah. Uh, I think Kayla did the same exact thing. You did your senior year, Yeah, year, from, right? from third form. Yeah. Uh, my story is a bit similar to Irene's uh, applying to the one-day application uh -huh. at the Quebec Fair. But my parents already knew that I was ready to leave yeah. Belize to go study this year. So they were just waiting to see which school is, does this girl want to go mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And when I, came up with, when I came to them with UWC, they were like, okay, this is different mm -hmm. because it's not a traditional four-year bachelor Pro uh, yeah. pro pro program. It's mm -hmm. an IB school. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's next side of the world, in my case, which is Norway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were like, okay, you know, make sure you call me every day and you send me a text message every day or 
just you know try and get through that you know what you know what i uh, and i think this what i'm about to say is very important uh, and i'll tell you why many of us i've got a daughter who is she'll be 19 mm -hmm. but to see her leave for me it's sort of devastating especially having to go somewhere another part of the world another right. country and uh, that for me is nerve-wracking and there are a lot of parents who feel just the way that i feel right now i they say it's not polite to ask a woman her age but at the same time, I, I think it's very important for folks to know, especially at the age that you guys uh, are, that experience and exposure could be one of the best things for our country. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Well, let's start here. You guys left or went already. So how old are you? I'm 17. 17 years old. And I old, left at 15. And you left at 15 and yeah. she went all the way to Wales. Now this is for parents to know that it is okay. That if you, if you raise your child the way that you want for them to be, then it is okay. And what's your age? I'm 17 and I left when I was 16. She left when she was 16 and Ms. Leaving Malia? at 16. Leaving at 16. I'm also leaving at 16. Yeah. There we go. And uh, what's, what was the feel? I, I, I wanted to hang out here a little because you guys went already. What was that feeling like, knowing that you're about to leave and you're going, well, you're leaving your country, you're about to leave there, and then when you got there, what was that like for you? Well, going into it, I knew for sure it was an opportunity of a lifetime. And it wasn't, my parents were, yes, they were nervous to send me at a really young age, but they realized that that's an opportunity that you can't get in Belize, and they don't want to hold me back. They know that it's an opportunity that I really want, and as long as they see that your child has like the drive and the passion to actually do it, yeah. they're very excited for you, and they will support you throughout the way. And I think going to a UWC school really opened up the doors and just opens up your mindset, and you see more about like what the world is about. Hello. Um, for me, you know, it, it, and for everyone, it's uncharted territory. You have no idea what you're stepping into. You don't know who your neighbors are. You don't know who your roommates are going to be. You don't know the country. You don't know the streets. Like, mm -hmm. Belize is so familiar yeah. for yeah. everyone. And, and I think uh, we're all used to, like, our little cubbyhole. Or domain. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and that's all we've ever known. And so, so young, especially. I was, I was 15 years old, and it was terrifying. I mm -hmm. mean... Wales, where where even is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what and everyone asked you. Yeah, it's it's um it's country land. It's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I my school it, it was a castle, a 16th century castle, wow. and they tend to not put castles in the middle of cities. <laughs> that's all I can say. So I was absolutely um, isolated from mm -hmm. everyone and. Yeah. And it, it's nerve-wracking at the beginning, but you get there and the school, yeah. it's such a warm environment and everyone accepts you. And, and it's not just about accepting, it's not that people will accept you, it's that they're trying so hard to be accepted because everyone's just so yeah. international. So it, it's a natural click and it's a natural fit mm -hmm. into this environment that you have no idea where you're going. And yeah. it's, it's uh, the experience is unimaginable. Yeah. Now, what I find interesting is that at 15 or 16, you're interested in attending a college like this. This is a very specialized mm -hmm. program, yeah, and I think is. you did a great job of outlining it. It's international students from all over the world. They mm -hmm. go through a very rigorous application process, kind of proving your worth that right. you <laughs> will benefit from the program. And, you know, you also have the option of finishing up school and kind of going the traditional route and waiting to go for your four-year four year degree or your associates here and finish up mm -hmm. um, internationally. <coughs> but what about this program was something that appealed to you? Was it just moving across the world from your parents or, I mean, what was it? Um, well, I think for me it was... Like you said, it was, it's not like the typical route that most people take. And I feel like that alone is just something that sets you apart. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of like opening up new opportunities for you in the future as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after these two years, you also get the opportunity to do, uh, you're open to the Shelby Davis Scholarship Fund, mm -hmm. which essentially is about 140 colleges in the United States that um, you will get funding from almost guaranteed at the end of these two years. So I would also say like for anyone who's watching, like please like look into UWC because it's a really good opportunity for your future and as a way to like open it up for you. Yeah, yeah. afterwards. Well, it's, for me, it was my dream. Since I, there's pictures of me at 10 years old visiting that campus, that very campus. I was 
in front. I, I, it's been my dream for ages. And it wasn't, it wasn't the UWC either. You know, it was Atlantic College, Wales. Mm -hmm. And I learned about that school before I even learned about the UWC chain. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so ever since then, I'd, my dad, he's from Wales. Mm -hmm. And so he told me that when he was younger, he applied, and him and his brother applied to the school, and he could never get in. And wow. he was like, I didn't get in, and I don't know, I doubt you will, but <laughs> you can yeah. try. It's an amazing school. And yeah. so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And after that, I've set only, like, every decision I ever took from 10 years old forward was mm -hmm. to get into that school. Wow. So, yeah. so and oh. applying on this end, Irene, um. clearly it was just a whim. <laughs> Yeah, it was, but I heard about this school before because Ella, um, we went to the same high school, mm -hmm. so I saw that she was having so much fun at this college. Mm -hmm. and I searched it up, I was like, what is this? And mm -hmm. I found that it was UWC. I found out there was a national committee from Belize, but at that time on their website, it said only 16 to 18 year olds to apply, but I was 15 at the time. Wow. So I couldn't apply until yes. afterwards when I was 16, I decided to apply in a whim. Okay, yep. well, uh -huh. for me, it was really the, uh, the volunteer opportunities. <laughs> You're like, I knew it. <laughs> um, when I started looking into UWC, and especially like Kayla said, what their motto is, and using education as a, a force for mm -hmm. you know, sustainable development and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, especially UWC, Red Cross, Nordic, Norway. The Red Cross in the name right there completely grabbed my attention <laughs> off yeah. the bat. And one of the things I loved is that right next to my campus, there's a rehabilitation center where students can go do volunteer work mm -hmm. as a part of your course because a part of the IB is community service you yeah. have to do a certain time of um, yeah. giving back and so that is what I am most excited about <laughs> going to Norway and just okay. seeing what that is yeah. and what's what it's about and participating in it that's yeah. the word sorry the, yeah in terms of the in terms of the course does that dictate the country that you're going to do you choose the country you want to go to how does that work it's an international it's an it's, it's called the international baccalaureate so that's what the IB stands mm -hmm. for so it's based it's a, there's a standard base that this international board they decide and so it's not just the 17 school uh, every 17 school gives you the certificate, the International mm -hmm. Baccalaureate Certificate. Mm -hmm. But there's also hundreds of schools in America, the UK, that also give you the IB. Mm -hmm. And it's like its own, so, so America has the GPA. Mm -hmm. And then the UK has your A-levels, mm -hmm. and International Baccalaureate has their certificates. And so that's what we do. And it's it, its own standards, and each school has to fit, it has to fit into the standards of the IB. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, it's very very rigorous course like um, AP so advanced placement in the US it, it it's harder than that mm -hmm. and um, a levels too it's it's its own it's its own like course and um, and how challenging was it for you with your foundation here in Belize <laughs> both of you can share <laughs> <laughs> they had a nervous yeah. laugh just yeah. now that was interesting <laughs> well, the hardest part was time management because ah. like she said it's not it is very academic based but also about your community service and how willing you are to be a leader and to make change in the world around you yeah. and I feel like balancing those two is a bit hard in the beginning but you end up getting used to it and yeah. I don't know for me that was the challenging part just yeah. having that balance in between both. You chose Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah, because mm. your parents didn't want you too far away. Yeah, <laughs> I had the choice between Canada and Norway and they were like, no, we don't want you to go <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, all the way over there. Just stay in this hemisphere so yeah. you can visit home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was the same thing with me. I had um, another option in Tanzania and India, but my parents were like, nope, yeah. Costa Rica. They were like, we want you to learn Spanish, go to Costa Rica. That's so you had three choices. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And for you? Well, uh, how it, I think it worked for this year is that every year UWC Belize gets scholarships from around the world, from the 17, or it, well, the schools decide where they want to give their scholarships to. This year we had three partial and three full scholarships. Mm -hmm. uh, three, I received yes. a partial scholarship. Irina received partial to Costa Rica, and then there were three full to China, Japan, and Norway. Uh, now, the application process to UWC is a five-step process, and the last one's an interview. So in my interview, they asked, so if you got in, which one would you prefer to go to? And I looked at my dad, and he was like, Norway, Norway. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right. 
so when I got my email of acceptance, they were like, yay, Norway, Red Cross Nordic, and I was like, yes. <laughs> 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 and it helps that you also have, there's another Belizean um, going right. to her school, so she's going to be paired yeah. up with another Belizean, mm -hmm. yeah. um, Amberly Marin. Mm -hmm. no, but that's very rare. To yeah, have yeah, yeah. 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 I, like, I think you're the first. I'm the second. The like second. The first one was in six years, like six years ago, and then there's me. So oh. now everyone at the school is like, "Where's Belize?" Yeah. yeah. So I'm Belize. <laughs> what? I'm the second Belizean to go to Wales, Wales yeah. too, and the uh, one before was her sister. Her, mm -hmm. her sister was the very first um, Belizean student to go to Atlantic College, and so she was two years above me. So the people below her and above me knew her. So that whole year, they were. They, they all knew about Belize, and it was because they were friends with her, it was a lot more welcoming. So having another Belizean yeah. that's yeah. Like yeah. with you, it, it's so amazing. She's you already have to answer the where is Belize question a mm. lot. Like, <laughs> sure. yeah. yes. I'll take, um, I'll carry her on the map with me. <laughs> no, yeah. It's right here. But I want to ask, you know, now that uh, you both have completed your program, you did one year and you did two? Two years. Now, what is your biggest takeaway? Clearly, you have an ID mm -hmm. and that you, you've been able to live in a completely different country, but what is the takeaway that you didn't expect? Oh, that's a loaded question. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> um, man, I was always, I, I always thought that going to the school, I was gonna get my grades. I was like, I'm gonna get my grades and I'm gonna go to university and I'm gonna go to med school and that's it. And that school shook my life. I, I changed so much. It, it, this school is like your moral compass. And after, after going to the school for two years, my whole plan changed. Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm, not even, I'm not going to university this year. I'm taking a gap year so I can volunteer mm -hmm. and give back to my community. And I, I never thought I'd want to come back to Belize. But that school, like, that school taught us that we're going to teach you right now, right here in this country, as long as you promise to go back to your country and give them what we gave you. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm back here for a year and I'm gonna volunteer, and I'm gonna help out my community and then I'm gonna go to university, but not as a doctor, as a chemical engineer to cool. go on into green energy. Mm -hmm. And so my whole life has changed and, and the people I met, I, I was like, I'm not gonna meet anyone, I'm just gonna keep my head down, study, because. Mm -hmm. This, it's a hard course, and I met my friends for life, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's yeah. insane, the connections you make. Yeah. It's actually, it, it's so beautiful, the people. I, I have my, my roommates. E each of us were from a different continent. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And s yeah. so now, wh like, if I ever want to travel around the globe, I can call mm, up someone and people. say, yes. hi, I'm coming, I'll be in your country for a weekend, let me spend, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. that's fascinating, Ooh. the way mm -hmm. how it changes your perspective on what yeah. you wanted to do. Yeah. Did you have a similar experience? Well, like Ella said, when I first went, I was like, wow, this is a really tough school, and I know, like, leaving from third form, I don't really have, a like, the experience of fourth form or taking the CXC or mm -hmm. different things like that, and I'm going to have to put in a lot of work in order to do really well. And going into it, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna study, I'm not gonna socialize, like I'm gonna make sure I get my grades. But I think after my first year there, I realized that having that balance is hard, but it's very worthwhile because you make friendships that last a lifetime. Like mm -hmm. now I can say like, oh, next summer I might go to Pakistan or somewhere and visit people that yeah. are my friends and I'll have someone to host me like no matter where I go. And yeah. that's a really good network of people to have. And yeah. You know, another part of the experience that I'd imagine, and I think Ella touched on it just a bit, it was the school is kind of like an incubator of like-minded young people. The fact that you all wanted to apply uh, is, is one commonality already, mm -hmm. uh, which means clearly you are open to exposure, that you're open to community mm -hmm. service, um, and that you see the benefits of kind of this internationalization through schools. What was it like to have that as, as your peers uh, for whether it's one year or two years? Because I always find when people come together with, with like-minded ideas, there's so much power in how much it can motivate you yeah. individually. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how different mm -hmm. everyone is. And like, we all had the same goal. You mm -hmm. know? We all want to improve the world and society. And we all have this like idea, but 
to the core, to the bone, we're so different. Everyone's political ideas, the religions, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, uh, honestly, and it's not, you know, it's not utopia. It's not a utopia. Okay. You're, you are going to have your, your arguments with people, but it's not... It's not arguments. You, you get into intellectual debates mm -hmm. and, and you, you discuss the world mm -hmm. and your views and, and it, it's, it's moving and it's powerful because the school, they give you the power. So we run our school. We For over 20 years, Great Belize Television, Channel 5, has been the leader in award-winning local programming. We have also produced some of the best video commercials, documentaries, and live events for clients countrywide. And we continue to offer high quality production services to maximize your advertising needs for your business or organization. From concept to completion, let us help you achieve your marketing goal by producing your commercial, documentary, graphic animation, live event, or even designing your website. Using state-of-the-art equipment and experienced personnel, we can make your ideas come alive. For more information, come see us on Coney Drive or give us a call at 223-0146 or 223-7781 or email us at gbtv at vtl.net. Great Belize Productions, making great television in Belize. The big decisions for the school as students, as the student body. Um, but but uh, coming from such different cultures, it, at the beginning, of course, it is going to be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Some students don't can't don't show affection you know because that's their culture mm. they can't show affection with other boys and it's a co-ed school mm -hmm. or they can't they don't drink and some some students from Europe that's all they do and mm -hmm. I get I'm paraphrasing like, yeah. of course but it's it, it because it's such the cultural difference wide yeah. yeah um you but, but uh, towards the end, towards the end, everyone is just friends with everyone, yeah. and it, it's unlikely friends. We had Israeli and Palestinian best friends mm -hmm. at the school. Yeah, you, you, you I don't yeah. think you get Those that. Those countries anywhere. are totally yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you said that because I, I, I wouldn't begin to hazard a guess how many people your age even know of, of the relationship <laughs> between <laughs> yeah. is uh, between these two countries, and and. Talk to me about the perspective it gave you on Belize. Uh, did you feel, uh, I mean, how did you feel coming back when you understand what's happening in everybody's country, their challenges versus our challenges? What perspective did you come back home with? Well, for me personally, coming back home for summer and for Christmas, I really gained a really like greater appreciation for Belize. I, like before, like Ella said, like, most of the time students who go and study abroad, they don't necessarily want to come back home because yeah. we don't have the best opportunities after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now that I've gone there and I've experienced another part of the world, I realize how much I'm in love with my country. And yeah. it really makes me feel proud to be Belizean. Yeah. Yeah. And I think going to UWC, it really makes young people like have discussions that people don't normally want to have. Mm -hmm. You have difficult discussions and you work through things and that's how like she said like Israeli and Palestinian people become best friends because they learn to understand people from a different perspective yeah. yeah you know and at this particular point I wish like we had your parents here <laughs> so they could tell us uh, how what, much what, changed. yes what 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 you were like before you left yeah and what was their perspective what you were like now and how they feel about you and how you've changed uh, I, you know, and I, I'm so sorry that we're basing much on no, them, it's but right. I think one of the reasons They're for that, in. yes, I, and that's the reason why, because uh, whenever somebody leaves your country and you've had that uh, that feel for that particular area, then it's best to give that per that person your knowledge. So, what was the hardest thing for you guys there, besides just getting there, besides having to leave your country within your two years, within your year? What would you say would be the hardest thing for them? <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't. They don't have an immediate answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say for me, uh -huh. I was a pretty shy person before I went to the school. And I, I would say, like, when you first get to the school, it is going to be a bit, um, you're going to be a bit shy and you're going to be a bit, like, worried. And I think what I realized really quickly going to the school is that everyone there is in the same boat as you. They're in a new country. They don't know anyone there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is what really like, gets you comfortable in the beginning. And that's what made me really comfortable and really get out of my shell. And mm -hmm. 
I would say my parents really realized like how much I've changed since then. I was really shy. I would, I probably wouldn't even come on this show today <laughs> a year ago, but here I am, and yeah. it really helped me in that sense. Well, apart of course from the obvious schoolwork, that is so so difficult. Uh, the hardest part was the goodbye. Mm. Wow, you know, the thing is you go in to the school and you know it's only going to last two years and you know like you're going to be saying goodbye in two years and throughout it all you're like, the course is so hard, you're like, I can't wait for this to be over, but when it's bittersweet and I had such a difficult time leaving mm -hmm. and the goodbyes, the, the people you meet, because some of these people you really will never see again. Yeah. We had refugees, you know, from Syria. Wow. And they, they were trying to seek asylum, but they, they were going to have to go back. And, and they, the goodbyes, yeah. that, that was tough. And both years, because mm -hmm. after my first year, my second year's left. And mm -hmm. that, I was crying five days straight. Wow. <laughs> it, it's so hard, and then when I left, it was, it's been two years, you know, it's time to leave, but so, so hard. And, and you just become, that place is a part of you, you know, it will always be a part of you mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Um, people that graduate from these schools, they keep in touch, like they have their reunions, and apparently there's a statistic that 70% of all UWC students marry another UWC student. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I wish I loved you. <laughs> like nervous chuckle right now yeah. like parents are watching the point is you keep in, you you keep keep in touch it's a, yeah. it's a, a constant, constant web That's it's a, a web of connections yeah. And yeah i think though that there's still some parents who are trying to uh digest the fact that for you and for you who you who left uh following third form because i'm trying to get it to right. to, to talk as well like a parent. you know I, I, yeah, yes uh, so i'm trying to get w what's the gain having to leave third form knowing that you have not graduated with at least your high school diploma uh, and what does it prepares you for when you go there and you come back do you go directly to college is it an avenue to get into some good colleges why you leave third form can you explain that to us please so i left at third form so, uh, there we go well. why leave at third form because it is third form mm. it is your two years is third form and fourth form so if you finish your year you're doing a year over mm. and i know like in Belize, because this, it's so complicated, in mm. Belize it's so hard because in most places after second form you get a diploma and then you move on to your last two years of high school before university. So for Belize it's a big shock, you know, you're like, oh my god, you're leaving and if you, if you don't do well, what do you have? Mm -hmm. You have nothing and, and it's, that, it's that leap, but you do it, you take this course and you automatically, when applying to universities, you automatically get top listed. Yeah. There you go. Yep. You get your, your paper falls to the top. IB students have, a, I don't know how the percentage, but you have a way higher chance of getting into your top oh, yeah. universities. They look for IB students first, and then everyone else filters in. That was, a that was your CLP? There that you was go. Yeah, that, yeah, that was, was the reason why okay. I wanted to apply and yeah. how I got my dad to agree with me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I saw you nodding your head. This is what you went, this was your uh, pitch that you mm -hmm. made to your mm -hmm. parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. This um, certificate yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, okay. it's a big deal and universities acknowledge that and they give you, they give you the credit for it. And right. Honestly, I prefer this, this certificate. So I've completed my two years, I've taken my exams, I have my certificate and I prefer the certificate over a GPA, over a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Um, any day, but it's that it's that leap, you know. If I if I messed up in these exams that I just took in May, I'd have nothing. Mm. But pressure, high risk, yeah. high reward. Yes, that's yeah. Yeah, that's high risk, high reward. I think it was the same thing for me because uh, I graduated high school. I graduated from BHS, but the places I can get into with my BHS diploma are what compared to where I can get into with my IB diploma. Immediately, it, there's a drastic change and difference. Mm. And it was the same selling point with me from my parents. Mm. Yeah. When we had to sit down and we talked, uh, my uncles and my aunts who have been to college, they were like, eh, you're practically like doing two years over. But I was like, look at where I can get into now and where I can get into yeah. when I'm finished yeah. with this course. Yeah. Yeah. The distinction that it offers you. Okay. Um, 
it, what I want to have uh, some understanding of is because, and I'm sure people are watching, oh, sending a 15 year old away, a 16 year old away. Yeah, and one tough. of the challenges we know that takes place in Belize is there's a very difficult transition when people leave high school. We tend to, for lack of a better word, uh, maybe baby people too much in high school. Mm -hmm. They have very structured yeah. systems, mm -hmm. and um, really in other in other countries sometimes there's a process of already letting go and having uh, yeah. students learn to maintain their own schedule. So you got thrown into that straight out of third form. Um, how structured is the program for the support that is necessary? For people like you who came in and you never had to manage your own time, you know, make sure you get to your classes on time. You always had mom or dad telling you get yeah. up, go to school, or teacher saying go here now. Yeah. No, it's, your, it's your pure motivation. Yeah. If you're there, you want to be there. No one, no one's just thrown in, you know. You want to be there. So in the mornings, you get up, get ready, you go to school, and the, there's, they're not going to baby you. They're not going to say, here, like, here you go. It, it is high school, but they're not going to say, tell you what to wear. There's no uniforms. They're not going to tell you what to wear. And I think for most of these schools, there's not even a dress code. Mm -hmm. You know, you wear what you want. You roll in when you want. And at the end of the year, if you're not up to standards, they're going to say, look, you're not what we're looking for. But most, most students, they find they have the drive. Mm -hmm. You have that drive initially. Um, and, and you have and you have house parents, so you do have your supervision, mm -hmm. but it's not ac for academics. And if you're struggling academics, they give you all of the support in the world. You have tutors, you have teachers that work long hours mm -hmm. after hours, and you have your par like house parents, mm -hmm. and they're the people that that take on your parent role. Yeah. So if you are slipping in school, they're going to see it. So you have mm. some guidance outside you do. of, of that of the classroom. Counselors. Yeah. yeah. So that you do have these house parents and they take they, they look at you like they're your their child and yeah. they they notice when you're skipping classes or you're late and they they're going to they take care of you when you're sick actually kind of. They'll yeah. give you some tea or whatever. Yeah. They'll um they they're going to be your your they're going to be in your corner, always fighting for you, helping yeah. you to get achieve your best. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was that was all I needed. Mm -hmm. That was all I needed. I just needed someone who I knew I could cry to, cry, <laughs> cry to, talk to if I needed to, and someone to like take care of me mm -hmm. if I needed it. And other than that, it's you. Everything is you. Yeah. Is it all girls? No, it's co-ed. No, it's co-ed. Co yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We're just all girls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. And this year, the four Africans going are all girls as well. That's really interesting. But it, it's, there are, in all UWC schools, there's majority girls. Yeah. There's 60% mm. girls yeah. and about 40% boys. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I want to know something. You know, one of the things that we do for each other as Belizeans is that we, we do say, um, yeah, they're not Belizean. And we, a, a, a lot of times, we, you go somewhere and uh, like, only Belizeans behave like that <laughs> all the day. So I want to know, as Belizeans, uh, what would you say you contributed to that school being a Belizean? What was, that, what was your biggest contribution as a Belizean? Not as a student, not uh, with your intellectual ability, but as a Belizean, a cultural Belizean. What did you contribute? For me, like I said, when I went there, no one knew what, what or where Belize was. Mm. Yeah. And so that kind of just gave me the drive to like make sure, like, okay, in my first year, in my two years here, everyone's going to know where Belize is and Sweet. want to go there. Mm -hmm. So I think like every opportunity that I got, I made sure that I was like, okay, Belize is... Like, I'm, I took the time out to explain to people what Belize was. And on campus, you get the opportunity to... Like, we have different cultural days where you get to share your culture. Sweet. And you get to learn about other cultures as well. So I feel like that international aspect is something that's universal and everyone gets to share their culture yeah. equally. And that was something that really put Belize on the map, kind of, because now yeah. all my friends want to come and visit Belize. Yeah. Yeah. You spoke Creole yeah. to them? Sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and for you, Ella? Um, yeah, when you go to the school, you're not just going as... I'm not just going as Ella, mm -hmm. or, and you're not just going as Irene. You're going as Irene, comma, Belize. I went as... Ella, com, uh, Ella, comma, Belize, and you really, you really make your mark, and you represent your country. You really have to because yeah. everyone. So you, you have your flags, and you're showing your flags, and everyone is always showing their flags in your face, and that's yeah. what that's what you have to do. So as a Belizean, I definitely, definitely left 
I th think I left a very good impression of Belize. I've had two friends come this summer to visit to see my. I had one friend from Holland, mm -hmm. from the Netherlands, and I had one friend from Paraguay, and they flew from all of the, and it's insane. And I I didn't go to visit anyone. You know, I'm like, oh, I have the best country. <laughs> 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 and that's that's um, I'm sure a part of your goal as well. Yeah. So, so when do you leave? Saturday. What? <laughs> yeah. I leave next week Monday. What? Yeah. What are the feelings like this week? Oh, excitement. <laughs> Definitely. If you ask, and after this conversation, more so. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yes. if you ask your mom, what? what? Yeah, no. If tell you us, ask my us. mom, she's a bit scared because yesterday, you know, it's time to start packing. I've been clearing up my room, yeah. putting clothes in bags for donation and all of that. And she told me, I said, oh, start packing so you get a head start. I was like, all right. What she didn't think was that I was going to finish packing. So everything's in my carry-on, in my backpack, my blanket, and pillow are by the door. And she walks in from work yesterday, and she tells me that her heart drops. Oh, and she's no. like, wait, did the flight move to tomorrow? She's like, wait, did, did the flight move to tomorrow? Is it, is it Friday already? What, are we leaving? Yes. I'm like, uh, yeah, mom. <laughs> like, yeah. it's almost time. That's yeah. look, that's only two days away. I could hear, I heard, I heard the giggles. I heard the giggle, <laughs> yeah, giggles outside. But, but my one gosh. thing I, I think I want to say is that, mm -hmm. as for the parents, I, I know a lot of you are. I, you would be scared. Mine are yeah. too. Yeah. Um, here in Belize, if, if your child becomes a part of the UWC movement, the parent becomes a part of it as well. Sweet. So they, I remember when we were applying, the room was filled with parents. Mm -hmm. it's their parents were there as well during our application process yeah. um, because they know that what their child went through and what it takes. Mm -hmm. So they know what they're looking for and they're also there to support each other and bring the UWC movement to more awareness across the country so yeah. that we can get more students out there and more students to these schools to experience well, we're going to experience what they did and get the same open-mindedness and, and, well, opportunities that yeah. it offers. Oh, mm, my God. Now, mm. what would you say to other students who are looking at this, probably very excited, want to uh, apply, or parents who are watching, who are perhaps saying, maybe my child can do it, maybe not, mm -hmm. um, why they should go the extra mile? I mean, there are challenges in getting sufficient applicants each year. Yeah. And, I, and, and I know it's because of our culture, we don't let go of our kids so early. Um, so it is a tough sell for the kids to the parents. But what would you say to them, parents or student, why they should go ahead and apply? Let's start with the newbies first. Sure. Okay, all right. Um, Definitely because of the simply the opportunities and mm -hmm. the exposure you can get by going there. Yeah. You know, my, Irene and I applied late, but in November, December, when applications come out, go for it. You know, it's it's definitely something that is worth it. Mm -hmm. And with the opportunity of a full scholarship or a partial scholarship, you're not really losing anything. Yeah. Right. You have the time to 16. You have the time to get all this exposure, and it's when you're soaking things in. So yeah. make the most of it. Definitely. Perfect. I absolutely, absolutely agree with Zavisa mm -hmm. because there are just so much opportunities that you can get from Belize, but there's also so many more that you can get abroad. Yeah. Because as you know, Belize is still developing, so we don't have as much opportunities to go on to higher tertiary level schools as other countries do. So, and then also UWC schools, as like Ella and Madison said, they're international students. They're not only international, but local. Mm -hmm. So you get to learn about so many different cultures that you just don't do here. Yeah. So that's what excites me. Yeah. Cool. Um, I would say for parents, um, it's although you are excited about the opportunity for your child, and if you're willing to let them go at a younger age, I would also say that it also depends on what the child wants. Yes. You can want it for your child, but your child also wants to want to do it. They have to be passionate and driven to do well in the school. And I feel like sometimes that's what leads to some students' downfall. Like their parents really want them mm. to go, or they were an alumni of one of the schools and they see how important and how great of an opportunity it is, but their child doesn't necessarily want to do that or they don't have the drive to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say it's not for everyone, but I wouldn't discourage anyone from applying. Yeah. I'd just say apply because it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. It's a once in a lifetime experience and it's absolutely worth it. Alright. All right. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Um, yeah. Saturday. If, uh, and your parents who are nervously watching, best of luck yeah. to them as well. <laughs> Saying farewell. 
And ladies, we hope to see more of you. Clearly, yeah, uh, you've had a life-changing experience, and, and uh, we know how that can only propel you to do even greater things in your future. So thank you for coming in and sharing your thank experiences. You. Thank you. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be talking about backpack fashion from the stationery house. So please, stay tuned.